it's going on YouTube, welcome to the video guys, so in this video today we will be <sighs> gapping these bad boys, we'll be gapping our rings for our compression and the oil rings for our K20 A3 build, so let's get right into it guys. Alright guys, so in this video we'll be, like I said, we'll be gapping our rings for our K20 A3 build, um, rings are very important guys, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, it makes or breaks your engine, uh, a lot of things make and break your engine, but if you have a very crazy wide gap, obviously there will be a lot of blow by from the top half of the engine. And if it's too much of a thin gap, you can have it contact because obviously these things expand. And if it contacts, it just break uh, from overheating and probably blow your old goddamn piston. So it's, it's good to follow and make sure you have tolerances. Um, if you're doing a rebuild, it's not too bad to buy new rings. Um, your engine has probably had low compression or a lot of oil consumption. Um, it's probably because of rings as well. Um, but just for peace of mind, it's not bad to just buy new parts and just make sure you follow manufacturer specs. Um, I know a lot of things uh, varies by the material of the, the rings, especially if you're running boosts. I'm sure there's a lot of engines who are running boosts with manufacturer specs ring gap but I'm sure if you're running boost you want to have a wider gap because obviously there's more expansion going on there are more heat more a lot of boom bang going on in that block so it probably get contact as soon as or get heat up as faster than just maybe a hot motor application so that's a really neat thing to know um, but just follow the manufacturer specs so we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys how this is done and let's get to it okay so now we're gonna start so one, two tools I'm going to use, obviously very important, uh, feeler gauge, uh, I'm sure you guys see me use this in the cylinder head warp check video, which is pretty important, and just a piston to just to flush and flatten the surface out on the um, piston ring when we put it in. So I have my, my piston ring here, you want to make sure you differentiate from your top ring and your second ring and make sure if you have a mark on your piston um, on your ring make sure if it says r1 or t1 make sure that mark is pointing upwards because there's a bit of a design you guys may not see it but there's a bit of a bevel edge on the ring gaps when it's doing its function so if you put it upside down it's not going to work correctly so that's a key thing you probably want to be precautious about so now I'm going to put this inside of my number one bore so if we're cutting from the timing chain side one two three four I think you guys only see number one because of the lens 50 millimeter so I want to make sure I put this in and then be careful because <laughs> fortunately these things can crack and you just gotta buy a new one so I have it I have it in the bore I'm gonna show you guys how it looks inside of the bore Alright guys, so that's it inside of the bore. Um, so, as you can see, the gaps are not aligned. So that's where I'm going to use the piston now and even it out as much as possible. So that's the plan of where the piston comes in. So I'm going to do that right now. And now so I'm going to use the bottom crown of my piston. I'm going to push this down. Honda recommend to push with like I think 10 millimeter. And it makes sense because the reason is because remember our bore, it has an outer round and taper. So it's not really cylindrical. And because when obviously when it expands, you know, you don't want it to be round because obviously the piston is going to seize it. But anyways, it's, it's, it's a bit taper up top. So I'm going to push it down at least a bit to the middle. It's all even now. I'll show you guys what I'm going to do now with the feeler gauge. Alright guys, so if you guys can see this and I'm really apologize for the for the quality I'm gonna use a light and I'm sure you guys can see just right there there's a small little bit that gap right there all right um, so I already pushed it down I brought it up a bit so I can show you guys in the video um, I wish it was a little bit down but it's it's, it's all right I mean the, the piston travels that far so it's, it's not a big deal um, but I want to show you guys what's up so now we're going to use our tool right here, our feeler gauge. Now Honda recommends um, the top ring, it's the same for the A3 and the A2. Um, 
eight thousandths, eight ten thousandths of an inch. Um, the least and the maximum, I think, is I forgot the maximum, but the the minimum is um, eight ten thousandths of an inch. Anything lower than that, it's it's hard for you to put the gauge in between here. If it's tight, then you need to gap the ring. So I'm gonna use my feeler gauge here. 18 thousandths of an inch, 20 millimeters. I'm gonna should just easy force right through. All right. What I'm trying to feed for here is not much resistance, but just a just a little grab. You know what I'm saying? But you don't want it to be you don't want to be fighting against it, especially to put in here. Obviously, I'm kind of fighting. Not really fighting that much because I'm I'm here trying to hold the light and the the gauge at the same time. My apologies. But it should just decently just fit in and just decently slide. All right. So this this ring is in is in gap. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for each bore because remember, each bore doesn't wear the same. So I'm gonna do the same for two, three, and four. So I'm not gonna put this ring in here and do it. Put all the rings in here and do it for the rest. I'm gonna do it for each bore. That, that, that's just for me. If you wanna do it that way, you learn that way, then that's fine. But I'm just like, you know, they don't wear the same, so just be precautious. It may not be the same in the, in, in, as number one. So I'm gonna do the same for the other bores. So I'm gonna try the second ring and the oil rings. The only rings that we do not gap is the oil expander. That doesn't need to be gapped. Just the four rings, the two compression rings, and the two oil rings. All right guys, so this is my second ring. Man, this, this 50 mil is doing a good job of showing, especially on the second ring, since it's coated a bit different color and thicker. So you see that all right here? I always wanna make sure it's facing up. Not down, up. Doesn't matter what application or engine it is, always up. Just to follow the design, and it's hard to see, cause I'll, it looks straight, to be honest with you, it looks straight, but there's a bit, different uh, bevels on the bottom of the, of, of the rings so to when it does its job all right guys so i'm going to put the second ring in now so that's just how i do this i'm sure a lot of guys are just like this just squeezing a bit just be careful and turn it up just down just get your piston to the rest of the job to even it out so the gaps will line up For the second ring, the gap is going to be 20 thousandths um, min to 26 thousandths. So make sure I chose, choose my um, 50 millimeter 20 thousandths of an inch and see if it fits. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys see this one too. So I have my feeler gate set at um, 20 thousandths and now I'm going to try and fit it in. To grab. Now it's not fitting. I have a hard time getting it fit. Just feel you have to snug it in, but it's, it's very. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pulling on it. It's, it's very tight. So it takes um, 16 thousandths, and that's the specification for the um, K28 3 piston. But um, for the 2 it's 20 thousandths. So Four thousandths more. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do this. I'm going to file the the end of the second ring. I know this, and you know everything I've probably done on this build is ghetto. So all I'm going to do is a trusty file. I have it on secured on my base uh, where I put my pistons in and my um, soda crate. And the plan is to when you're doing this, use reference on one side. So you're only going to you have one side as a reference, so keep that, do not grind that part off, and just scrape from one side. No, you don't want to go scrape happy, you want to go in inconsistent pattern, and keep checking as you go. Uh, it probably suck if you have to have a wider gap, but this, this is not so far off. So, that's the plan, like I said, have one side as a reference, and I'm going to grind in a back and forth motion, not up and down, but back and forth. Um, it's probably more trustworthy to go and get a file grinder. Uh, probably buy one in the future. So if you're scared, just just go the proper route and take it to a machinist or get yourself a file grinder, piston grinder. So that's all, guys. I'm gonna do this side.
All right, guys. So they have our ring in there. So let's try it this time. Hopefully, you guys can see the gap right here. So hopefully, this time let's try our um, our feel gauge, our twenty thousandths. Let's see if it goes through. All right. So goes through way better than what we had before. And just for indication that I didn't go too crazy. So the highest is 26,000. So let me grab my 26,000 feeler gauge. And if it doesn't go through. So I haven't, I haven't gone crazy over 20, 26. So I know I'm still in good waters here. So let's, let's try it again. Sorry if I'm blocking the light. View. All we want is just a slight drag. We don't want it to be we want to be crazy fighting it. Just a nice, that's a nice feel. So here you go guys. That's one ring gap. Guys, right, so there you have it. So that's how, uh, how I would gap my rings. I uh, really didn't want to get any call-outs or anything, so you do that, do this at your own risk. Like I said, just stick to the machinist. I'm no way better than you. So if you're scared of doing this method or just buy the ring filer thing, uh, just maybe hook a drill at the end of it to go faster, which is probably way more better than doing this with the file and probably more precise. But like I said, make sure you have correct tools. So I'm gonna take this ring out and I'm gonna put it in a Ziploc bag because I'm not gonna reinstall this engine tonight, right? You still have way to go on this K build. So I'm gonna put this in a Ziploc bag with the other top ring I'm going to follow the same procedure and put it in one bag and label it as um, War 1 or whatever. Just to not confuse them. I'm not going to put them back in the new set. So, that's it for this video guys. Hope you guys like it. Again, it's the same procedure for the rest of the rings. Uh, hope there was anything informative. If I missed out anything or gave out wrong information, please guys just leave your comment in the camera just fell by that leave your comment in the well it's just about to fall leave your comment in the description box and if you guys want to dm me or private message me or anything please do so and hope you guys like this video thanks for watching guys